Stubble. Stubble. Come on, give it up for Stubble. I never tire of clapping at Startup Weekend. Judges, a couple of seconds to get your minds at ease. Trey, five minutes on the clock. Ladies, tech looks good. Okay. Give it up for Corey for that logo. Yeah. <laughs> Stubble, take it away. All right, so meet Stubble, beards, booze, and casual bootlegging. So men want a good drink and a nice shave, and I think all of us women can agree we want a well-groomed man to buy us a drink. Uh, so what, is, what does the market look like? 35% uh, of liquor consumption comes from the 21 to 34 age demographic. Uh, in Gainesville, Florida, where we are both from, there's 50,000 people in that age demographic, and there's only two craft cocktail bars that exist in the heart of downtown, which is walking distance. And as a new young professional, um, I'm over the $2 doubles and the nickel pitchers, uh, and looking for a more craft cocktail experience. So, stubble is the answer. Um, what is the stubble experience? The stubble experience is craft cocktails made from small batch spirits, and custom taps made from uh, our brewery partners up in Gainesville, Swamphead and First Magnitude, that you can only find at our location. Uh, it's hot shaves in a 1920s barbershop in the back of our bar. It's themed events, whether that's beard contests or pop-up bartending courses, uh, or we bring in a tattoo artist for um, a wild art party. Uh, and it's also striking visuals. Uh, everyone that comes through our doors, we want to be a brand ambassador. Think Oxford Exchange, where everyone spreads the beauty and the feel uh, as soon as they walk through the door. So do people even want this double experience? Um, from a customer standpoint, all signs point to yes. Um, men want a good shave, women and men want a great cocktail, and everyone loves uh, a great atmosphere. Um, and also from an industry standpoint, signs also point to yes. We actually met with the bar, bar, um, the bar barbershop owner, Lionstead, here in Ybor, and he gave us great feedback, thinks it's a very tangible idea, and even wants to scope out places in Gainesville. So that was very reassuring. So what does the space look like? Imagine you're transported into a prohibition era, um, 1920s old fashioned feel. Um, you get the old fashioned barber experience, all the signage and labeling points to the prohibition area, um, intimate spaces that you can have a warm conversation, know your bartender, and of course the high quality craft cocktail small batch experience. So here's a sneak peek at our menu. Uh, I won't go through them all, um, but we've got the mutton chopped and screwed, the fear the near, lather, gents repeat, mustache ride. Uh, so everything from the way that it feels to be in there to the small details of the menu matter. Half of the menu is uh, flagship cocktails that stay um, all the time. The other half are a rotating list that is swapped out every month. They're a little higher priced. It gives you a reason to come back and try the amazing drinks. Uh, so looking at the financials, uh, like any other bar, uh, 60 to 70 percent of our revenue is going to come from alcohol sales. Uh, from our research with other bars in the area as far and industry average, people spend about 30 to 50 dollars per person uh, per visit. So that's the bulk, bulk of our revenue. Uh, the other is B2B, so uh, our subcontracted bar, uh, barber that has his space in our bar, uh, vendors as well, so bringing the experience uh, into the bar, whether that's bringing Swamphead in for a tasting, uh, the St. Augustine Distillery to do a cocktail making class, uh, or any, anything that you can think of is fair game for bringing brands into the center of the action with that highest, high spending demographic. Uh, and less than 10% is food, we don't need a full kitchen, uh, we just need cheese, charcuterie, uh, pickles, vegetables, things that you can eat, fill your stomach, and build the price of your bill. So startup costs, we're looking at about $350,000. Uh, that includes uh, our space, our construction, our licensing, our uh, initial inventory, all that jazz. Uh, and as you can take a brief look at our projections, uh, first year we're going to lose a little money, but after that. So marketing, how are we going to get people through the door at Stubble? Uh, so the cool part is, is uh, I started my own media and marketing company up in Gainesville about three years ago. And we actually have some of the most successful bars in Gainesville coming to us asking, how do we get more people through the door? Uh, so instead of putting a huge chunk of our budget to uh, marketing and advertising, we have everything we need built in. Uh, we reach about 
35 to 45,000 people in this age demographic every single month in the city. So uh, we would, as, as our doors open, uh, so would the floodgates of customers. So who are our competitors? Um, like we said, we only have about two local cocktail bars in Gainesville, and the capacity is tiny, nine to 12 people, it's always one in, one out. Um, and it's priced uh, 10 to $15 a cocktail, so much more expensive than what we're thinking. Um, also, local barbers, but our goal is to poach a barber with an established clientele so it can bring in more business and help with the brand. All right, it's time for Q&A. Sven, you know you're up next. With three minutes on the clock, judges. Give them hell. Yeah. They'll give me hell. Yeah. Well, it was ambiguous. Uh, two small questions. One, the the market research you did, the hundred people that was mm -hmm. your. Uh, so some uh, the half of it was about on the street. The other half was through our social media channels. Uh, people in that age demographic, uh, people that we know up in Gainesville. Um, and then um, one of them was eighty-four percent of men said they would buy a cocktail. Yeah, it's it's higher than that. Well, I mean, was that just saying, would you buy a drink? Um, in an, in an, yeah. Would you buy a craft cocktail like on the spot? Are you in the mood for going in and grabbing a ca craft cocktail? Can I ask Terry's weird question. How does that work out with kerning? Having like food and hair and things all in one place? All right, so with our conversation with Brian from Lion's Den, um, he taught us a lot about the zoning and the licensing that goes along with that. It's actually not as complicated as you think. More of the tricky part is making sure that the space we move into was a bar before and we're able to keep that uh, zoning consistent. Do you see people doing both at the same time, like getting a haircut and then going straight to the bar or vice versa? Or um, I think a little bit of both. Uh, we had ideas for the five o'clock shadow discount where um, you know, as soon as people come off of work, they get a chance to kill two birds with one stone in an environment uh, that's really, really trendy and nice to be in. Uh, the shave concept can also be extended to women with blow dry bar, uh, which is a new thing that's really popular. Um, I know that if I could go in, drink a cocktail and have my hair done and then still be at the place I wanted to hang out, that would kind of be a win-win. I like your idea for having workshops as well. I think that will really enhance your community reach. Absolutely. And the startup scene is growing. Um, if anyone's been to Gainesville recently, the city has changed tremendously in the past five to ten years. It's almost unrecognizable. So um, creating it as a, a, a creative refuge for anyone that wants to try an idea, whether we bring in Smiley's Moonshine for some tasting and things like that, or uh, just facilitating the artistic spirit in the town as well. Your first year cost seemed a little bit low. What were you basing that off of in terms of where were you geographically going to position the bar? And uh, so that's based off of a $17 per square foot estimate. Um, we're looking at a thousand square feet. Uh, so like uh, Ariana said, uh, a lot of the, there's two bars that are really, really, really popular in town. One of them uh, has eight, or not really popular, one of them is nine people in it and it's too small, like max capacity is nine. And the other is 6,000 square feet and it always looks empty. So we'd be looking at a thousand square feet. Uh, and that cost is based off of that. Obviously, construction changes if it was a bar before, is it in good shape, things like that. Yeah, I have an idea for me when I to start it. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Wonderful job, excellent work. Well, we have one more treat for you, and this one is the same, but a little different. Um, Sven Bormeister, am I saying that right? Oh, excellent, I was lucky. Um, uh, has worked uh, on a, one company for quite a while and been very successful at it. He's exploring a merger. I'll let him tell you more about it. Um, for the judges, um, we'd love you to treat this like any presentation. Give us some feedback, hit him with some questions. But uh, for, for the whole room, know that He's not participating in the competitive aspect of this competition, simply because Startup Weekend is generally for groups that are starting from scratch this, uh, scratch this weekend. And he determined uh, during the weekend that he's much too far along for it to be fair for him to compete against the other four teams. Um, with that, I think I'll let you tell them the rest. Cool. Clicker for you. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay. Cool. Take it away. All right, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Sven. I'd like to tell you a little story about The World is Awesome. Um, to start, um, I'm the founder of globalvillage.world. What I do is I publish a series called Best of the World. These are a series of books that I created about 12 years ago. These books are all essentially success stories of entrepreneurs from every city around the world that I publish in hard case books and they're used by the governments and the EDCs and all the entrepreneurs to, as corporate gifts to promote the city and all the, all the products and services with that. Now over the past 12 years I've managed to duplicate this in about 60 countries. It took me around the world to about 102 and then somewhere along the line I came on a holiday to Florida Met a girl, did a pub crawl here in Ebor, and the next thing I know, I put my bag down and now I live in Tampa. So, <laughs> at least I hired a Christina, my wife, and back. <laughs> right, so obviously, what am, I, what am I going to do? I'm going to publish the best of Tampa Bay. So, she quit her job and she's joined me on the, on the road. In the last five months, we've been publishing the best of Tampa Bay. Uh, we're almost done. It'll be a 250-page book of everything that's Tampa Bay. A couple of preview pages here, so it's with all the different mayors. And it's, a, it's a love story on, on the city we, we love so much. And I can tell you, out of all the cities I've been to, this is about the best place in the world you can possibly live. So I'm really glad to be here. Now, along the road, what, what happens is I go and bump into Joe from Tampa Bay is awesome. So we quickly become best friends because I got to realize he has a following of 180,000 uh, on, on his Facebook pages and he's doing exactly the same job as me. What I do in print, he does in social media. And uh, so we decided, well, it just makes perfect sense for us to join forces and, and tell the world how awesome Tampa Bay is together. Not only that, I was that impressed with his following that we said, okay, let's Let's do it all around the world. So every single one of my books is now going to get an awesomeness campaign on Facebook. You know, we've only just launched this a couple of weeks ago, and it's and it's it's flying. So all my partners around the world are super happy, and uh, we've got a great global business going. Now, what does that got to do with beer? So obviously, within all my travels, um, I've learned I've learned a few things. And there's like a few campaigns that are super successful, one I want to share with you. Now, we went on a holiday last year to, to Destin, and uh, we met this guy that started 30A.com. Now, 30A.com is exactly like Tampa Bay is awesome, but he just calls it 30A. So it's 30A is awesome. That's Panama Beach to Destin, right? So he's also got 200,000 followers on his Facebook. And then what does he go and do? He goes and white labels the local brew and puts 30A onto the actual beer. This is the beer that didn't sell that well. When he put his logo on it and then obviously marketed it through his media machine, last year he sold 1.2 million bottles of beer. He doesn't brew beer. He just knows how to market. So this is now selling place and product at the same time. It's genius. So obviously we think, well, this is exactly what we're supposed to do. <laughs> then I wanted to share one more campaign from our travels, one of the most successful marketing campaigns is I Am Amsterdam. Now that has really gotten the whole community in Amsterdam together to promote Amsterdam, they stick it on products, it's all about make it local, let's eat local, drink local, it's all a big marketing campaign to support the city. So, okay, so <clears throat> we've created a, a whole collage, I'm Tampa Bay, so we want to take lessons from Amsterdam, we want to take lessons from Fort Walton, and say, right, let's do the same. Let's create beer, gear, vodka. Let's, let's champion all the top products that come from Tampa Bay and let's give them an awesome sticker and promote them through the machine, the marketing machine that we have. This is still early days. We've been, literally, we've been thinking about this only on the weekend. But I know what we can do is amazing. All these products are cultural assets, just like the Cuban sandwich. So even Joey and his beer, it's a cultural asset. So we want to find products in Tampa Bay and we want to market them as effectively as 30A and I am Amsterdam. That's it. Can we stand up and take a few questions? Um, judges, I'll give you three minutes to have Adam. All right. 
Um, yeah, do you see beer distributors having any kind of issue of taking their brand off the beer and putting yours on? Or? Um, I guess Joey's no, we don't kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe some do, some don't. Um, I, I know the guy from 30A, and uh, you know, I had a chat with him. We're probably going to do a book best of 30A, and he explained the whole model to me. Um, so, so that brewer now had what trebled his 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 manufacturing capabilities. I mean, which brewer would mind selling more beer? The, the, I'd, I'd hate to see who, you know. So, I don't really have a problem with that. It's more about making sure we we get. A drop from Clearwater and one from from St. Pete and one from here and give everyone a bit of love. But we're going to find good beer, and um, and maybe we can make it seasonal. You know, so it's all just you know this is all still very much under under construction, and we'll figure it out along the way. And the point being is, I want to perfect it here in Tampa Bay. This is we're the guinea pig, okay? So uh, when I get it right here, then we're going to move it to Dubai and to into other cities, and then we can cross cross pollinate as well, because you know it's all about bringing people from around the world to Tampa Bay. And a big part of that is to come drink our beer and you know, eat our Cuban sandwiches. And, but we've got, to, we've got to sell it to them. And we've got to sell it, sell it hard and make it, make it sound awesome. So. Do you have any numbers around this, like startup and cost? Um, well, you know, we've, what, what, you, what usually happens, right, in any startup is you make the product, okay, you spend all the money on that, and then you still got to find money in marketing. So we've gone the other way around. First, we create the marketing machine, so that's in place, and now we go find the product. But because we're not making any product, we're just going to find great products that are already made, and all we have to do is relabel um, and or add our label to it, make a partnership, and sell it. So there's really not much money involved. It's just it's just taking existing products, tweaking it, and and marketing through through a system that we own. What kind of financial model do you work with with the the companies that you distribute for? If you don't mind disclosing, that's kind of a strange one, but yeah. Um, well, again, we haven't done it yet. This is this is this is still under construction, so all products would be different. So I know that the um, that the model with um, EA. I think it's a 20% profit share, and, and you know, so it's either a, a, at best a 50-50 profit share, and then um, you know, depending on what what's done, between 50 and 20%. Uh, quick one. I think it's really cool. Did you ever think about doing instead of taking the IM from Amsterdam, just coming up with a different one for Tampa, like a different phrase? Even if it's we are, I mean, just something slightly off from IM. Uh, okay, I mean, you want to have a different phrase. Uh, I think we use the same, you know? Oh, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Never mind. So, you know. Come on, give it up for Sven. Now it's my turn. Let's go into presentation mode. Here we go. It's time to get some grub and for the judges to deliberate. So, how was it? Everybody's minds at ease? Your nerves are calm? You did an amazing job? Those were some great presentations. I, for one, am really proud of you, if I'm allowed to say that. I'm super proud of you. It's been amazing to watch you all work on these projects and then to see this culmination of it. Um, thank you so much. That was fantastic. But what do we do next? First, I'm going to dismiss the judges. I'm going to give you a chance to grab some food, get some food and some drinks. Um, kind of like at a wedding, you know, a wedding party. I'm going to get you through the line first before the rest of the hordes tackle um, that room, and then I'll come and join you in the deliberation room. Chelsea, uh, Danny, um, they'll escort you to the secret green room where you'll be sequestered, and where they will decide our fate. Kombucha Tampa. Shout out for them to providing free kombucha to everybody. Free kombucha from Kombucha Tampa. Thank you so much. Feel free to have some samples of kombucha. We're really happy having you here. You're also sponsored, so we're really excited. Now, as the judges move, uh, and you guys can go as soon as you are done taking notes if you're ready, go ahead and grab some food. Um, judges, follow Danny. For the rest of you, I've prepared a little activity. Now, if you have a QR code reader, I, I, I did this because I'm fascinated to see how many of you actually use QR codes. Nobody. Nobody? There's usually one. Um, and this will work. Or you can type in this link. It's mrno.co forward slash 
Tampa CF. Now this is the crowd favorite survey for tonight's presentations. There are a couple of rules which should be obvious, but I'm going to state them anyhow. Don't vote for yourself. Don't vote for your own team. Now everyone in the room is welcome to vote. Every audience member, this is the crowd favorite. So if you're in the room, you are the crowd. Please vote once. And then there's a field for letting us know what you liked about that presentation, that team. Uh, I'd be very interested to know why you chose your favorite team. Uh, I assume I would have heard it by now if the form wasn't working. Is it coming up? Yeah. Good, good, good things. Now, you have been working in your pod teams all weekend. You've been working with you know four other people, three other people. Now you've seen what the other teams have been up to. You have an opportunity for the next 30 to 60 minutes, however long this takes, um, to relax and eat and talk to some of the amazing people, and I promise you, there's a lot of amazing people here uh, that you didn't get to work with intensely throughout the weekend, okay? Um, there's a lot of networking opportunity, there's a lot of skill, there's a lot of passion in this room about beverage industry, about entrepreneurship, meet some new people, right? Um, you, you, you've gotten to know your teams very well. Maybe this is a time to branch out and talk to someone else. I want to know whether you learned something, and don't, don't, don't show me hands just because you know, it's going to make me feel good, but um, if you learned something that you totally did not expect to learn this weekend, can I, can I see whether we accomplished that? Really? That's good. That's fantastic. Not you though, Corey. <laughs> no. You're just in your design mode all weekend, hey, in your milieu, your mode. Yeah. That's, fair. That's, fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So, I want to remind you that you're part of a global community. Um, and I don't have current stats, but like I said on Friday, we did like 1,200 of these in 130 different countries a couple of years ago. I don't know what we did last year, but it's probably a little less because we kind of scaled back a little bit. We were starting to break. The demand for this event is so off the charts that from that year previous, where we did like 600 events, so we did 1,200 events, like our system started breaking, Startup Weekend was really experiencing a lot of stress. That kind of demand for this entrepreneurship experience and training is just phenomenal. So um, I expect that some of you will catch that bug and pass this to other people. The way that this event usually spreads is just one of you loves it mm -hmm. and you're from another city visiting and you go there and you're like, hey, I want to do this there. And you put together an organizing team of a few people and you say, hey, let's go to another startup weekend. I want you guys to have this experience. And then uh, you all go to one nearby and then you bring it back to your city and you do it there. Um, it's that kind of organic stuff. That's really how it spreads. So if you're into that, talk to us. Um, we'll talk more about that later maybe. Um, but I, ex I encourage you to put Startup Weekend on your LinkedIn profile. Um, tweet about it, put it on Facebook, share it. You'll discover that people that you know know about this and you didn't even know you had it in common. I want to say a big thank you to the judges for coming tonight and volunteering their time. Thank you so much. As well as all of the mentors. If you're one of the mentors, can you just stand up? We want to embarrass you and thank you family and skating on the ice. We're, that's, I'm in the wrong, we're, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, everyone involved in this event, including myself, is a volunteer. It is a thing that we do because we love it. We were talking about this earlier in the room. We do it because it gives us such joy to teach and to share and to see you guys succeed. So um, take advantage of that because probably if you ask us for help again in the future, we will because we stretch ourselves too thin because that's what we like to do, right? Okay, so don't stop learning. You've experienced Startup Weekend. There are several other programs in the family of startup uh, stuff uh, which is nested under Techstars now. Um, which is another connection you might leverage now that Startup Weekend and its, and its sisters and brothers are, are nested under the Techstars Accelerator Network. One of them is Startup Next. Um, that's like a six week pre-accelerator, pre-incubator program. We don't bill it as an accelerator or an incubator, but many teams do come out of those ready to launch product, product or scaled up uh, significantly and, and, and gaining investment. I, I've been to a demo day of a Startup Next uh, graduating class in New York where the room was full of interested investors and it was a very powerful thing. That program is now free, but it's very hard to get into because the demand is high. It takes place in a dozen cities across the US, so that would be a destination. Your team would move to the city where the Startup Next takes place for, um, what did I say, six weeks? Um, so look up uh, startupnext.co or .com or something like that. Just Google it if you, if you want more information. Startup Digest is um, two things. 
it's an event digest for local cities. It's also a, a collection of reading lists. When you subscribe to Startup Digest, you choose which digest you'd like to receive. So you might choose Tampa. Is that a very active digest here? It is. So you might subscribe to the Tampa Digest, and then you would get a, a, an email once a week um, from a local curator that has decided these are the most important entrepreneurial related events for you this week. Go to them. You can also sign up for a number of reading lists. There's 20 or 30 of them now. I happen to be the curator for the Crowdfunding Digest. That means I put together a handful of articles that are the latest and greatest resources on the subject of crowdfunding, product crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding, any type. Um, so you can subscribe to that and see what I'm thinking about once a week. There's other things like robotics or marketing or women in entrepreneurship. There's a lot of different reading lists, so that's cool. You all know Startup Week. You just had one in Tampa. Startup Week is a week-long conference that's kind of an unconference turned upside down. Instead of being at a convention center, you're meeting in the offices and the coffee spaces and the co-working spaces of the mentors that are working with you. It's a little bit more workshop-oriented. I mean, I mean lecture-oriented, right? Not so much workshop like a startup uh, weekend. Is that pretty accurate? I've actually never been to one. It's a mix. It's a mix. It's really organized. Okay. February. There's one in February. Another Startup Week here in February. What's the best way to keep our, our eyes on that? Uh, go to Startup Week. Tampa.startupweek.co. Tampa .co. Is there a mailing list, or we just want to bookmark that site? Y'all you, you you, you'll, you'll make sure they get it. Okay, all right, excellent. Okay, so now you've been to a Startup Weekend, you could, if you want to, get more involved in Startup Weekend in Tampa. You're going to receive uh, a survey this week that's going to ask you, how did Michael do as your facilitator? It's like, you know, rating your Uber driver, you know, tell them what I screwed up and what I did well, and I read that. That email's gonna come to me. But, you know, give me the worst, because I do read every comment, and it's, it's one of the ways that we make this thing better. The organizers and I will read everything that you say. Um, you'll also have an opportunity to put in there that you'd like to be involved in the next event. And then we'll call you or email you, give us your email address. We'll say, yeah, come be an assistant, help us organize the next one if you wanna get involved. Uh, attend the next, do we know when the next Startup Weekend is? November. It's in November, which is going to be exciting. That's going to be the global startup battle, so you'll be competing. There's an, an added thing where you're competing against all the other Startup Weekends in the world, which will be about 200 Startup Weekends taking place in November. And it'll be a much larger event than this. It will be a general edition, so not just related to beverages, but you could expect um, a bigger venue somewhere with uh, you know 100 to 120 attendees, maybe 10 or 15 teams going on. So it's a little bit different energy. I highly recommend you go to that. Um, at this point, Trey um, has a few suggestions for other events that you could attend in Tampa related to entrepreneurship. Couple. So uh, shout out to Danny McDonald, who on a weekly basis hosts another entrepreneurial event called One Million Cups, which you'll see right over there. It is a local weekly pitch competition for you to come out to. I would highly recommend it. Incredible things happening every week in this space right here. Um, also, obviously, Startup Weekend in November. There is another entrepreneurial event that has some explicit language in its name. I don't know if I want to shout that one out just yet. Okay, it's called Fuck Up Nights. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's essentially a really informal speaker series where you can learn about how other entrepreneurs really ruined everything. Joey's actually spoken at it, it was a fantastic talk. He talked about Huda Poo Day when they accidentally sold 5,000 tickets and they only had, what, a thousand, a thousand capacity or something like that? We didn't match things up. Yeah. <laughs> and so you stand to learn a lot from other entrepreneurs' failures and really that's how you learn as an entrepreneur. You just fail and fail and fail and keep trying. So um, I, that's about it. That's all I've got um, for other events. I really want to thank our sponsors again because without them, this wouldn't be possible. Source Toad, incredible sponsor, incredible company. All of you people that need applications and websites, go to Source Toad. Next sponsor that we have here, obviously, is oh, sorry, da -da -da -da. Phonism, Tampa Cop Club. Eon, once again, is going to send coffee to your house. He knows where you live. <laughs> Phonism, awesome local company at the Tampa Bay Wave, which I believe is on our next slide. No? So the Entrepreneurial Collaborative Center is where we are. Pepin is donating a prize package that I'll talk to you a little bit about right now. So if you are a winner, uh, you get to meet the Pepin team 
If you are first place, you get to pitch your idea to the Pepper team. No matter what, if you are one or two, you'll get a tour of the facility, you will get mentorship, and you will learn about how Pepin does business. Just first place and second place? First place and second place, yep. Mm -hmm. They also donated some beer, so if you're in the top three, you're going to be leaving with a 24 pack of local beer. Congratulations. Um, also, from the prize package, Mark and Gracie here represent the Tampa Bay Wave, a fantastic local resource that just happened to be right there. And you'll get co working space um, and you'll get legal services, which I think I already told you about a little bit. And so, uh, look forward to that. I'm going to keep building the suspense. Um, let's see, Creative Loafing, shout out to them for the, all the advertisements. Shout out to Cigar City for hosting our lovely after party that's going to be happening at Cider and Mead, about a 10 minute walk that direction or a two minute Uber drive. Uh, we're going to have free beer. We're going to have uh, cider and meat tastings for all of you lovely people. So please come out and network and have a good time and decompress after a lot of hard work. Um, and Blind Tiger, obviously, Roberto here, excellent input. He's going to tear all your ideas apart in just a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and the law offices of H.S. Stephen Lee will help you with all of your uh, legal needs if, uh, if you're a winner. And I think that's... Ah, oh, the cheesecake. I actually got to taste the cheesecake. <laughs> 10 out of 10, get that cheesecake. Um, Jonathan R. Photo, putting in work. If you ever need photography for your event, hit him up. And then this lovely standard spoon that you've hid from others. So Michael's going to... And, and Tampa Kombucha. Tampa Kombucha as well. I haven't tried it yet. That's why it slipped my mind. I think you're going to try to give this away right now. Well, so let's, let's just see what happens. So, I was going to give this to, I'm just not very prepared for this part. And I was thinking I'd give it to, you know, the winning team that wins like the crowd favorite, but that turned out not to be a very good idea. Plus, how can you give one spoon to a team of people, right? <laughs> um, so then I devised this, this could bomb miserably because I don't have a, a, enough questions ready, but I'm hoping nobody knows the answers to my obscure questions. I'm just going to see who is worthy of this spoon by asking you what is not really an obscure question in the beverage industry. But the first person to shout out the answer to this question will then have to pass a second question test. <laughs> so first of all, from what plant are coffee beans sourced? Coffee plant. No. I'm looking for a type of fruit. Yeah. Are you laughing? <laughs> Judges are not allowed to answer, obviously. I'm sure we're going to come out with this. This was the easy one. Come on, anybody. Somebody in here knows it. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cherry. Yes, coffee beans are actually the pits of cherries. This is a beverage innovation edition. <laughs> actually, cherries, yes, and they're very bitter. This is why I'm facilitating beverage innovation. Uh, they're, they're a very bitter cherry. The husk is tossed. It's used for fertilization. It's used for other things. You don't eat it. Uh, it's very bitter. Um, but the, you know, the, the legend goes that some goat herders discovered their, their uh, animals eating the cherries, and they were like, why are they getting so spazzy, <laughs> right? And so, you know, they figured out eventually that it's the chemicals inside the pits of the cherries. So they roasted them. They've, you know, probably experimented. I'm making this up. But eventually they roasted them and they figured out how to extract that chemical and get it into our blood. Um, all right, we're gonna have to do another question. Okay, first person to give me the answer to, what is the key ingredient in the national cocktail of Brazil? Sugar. I've heard the name of the drink, but not the key ingredient. Did I hear cachaça? What, did I get two cachaças? What's that? It is cachaça. Who said it first? Okay. Sir, you have won a wing shell cocktail spoon. Congratulations on your cocktail knowledge. Wonderful. So, um, just a little bit about the standard spoon. Just to plug it, because I, you know, I, I talked to my friends in San Diego into giving me this spoon, and I brought it with me. Um, this is a product that came. I, I told I told a little bit about on Friday, so I'll be I'll be super brief here. But I, I got this idea from a bartender in Seattle who had received a rough version of this from a product rep who was handing these out on behalf of Tanqueray. 
and we discovered it was based on a 100-year-old uh, patent, and this is, this is what I just gave him. It's called the Wingman. It has a cylinder around the shaft so that when you stir a cocktail that has large chunks of ice in it, the spoon spins with the ice and doesn't jostle the ice. You, you use it very lightly. Um, and we did a Kickstarter campaign for this, raised about 17, 18,000 on there, um, and, and then spent the next year and a half trying to manufacture in America, found that that's impossible. Mm -hmm. And we went to China and went through the nightmare of, of liaising with a, a factory in China through a, a local English speaker on the ground. Eventually, it got built. Now it's in its second or third production run. They sell them directly. They go to beverage things. That's fun. That's the Standard Spoon. You can check it out at standardspoon.com. Okay. That was more than you wanted to know about a spoon. <laughs> Next. Oh, there's one more thing to plug. So, we're doing an experiment. This may or may not work. But if there are not enough conversations happening between local entrepreneurs in Tampa, between entrepreneurs in the state of Florida, we're creating one more place for those conversations to take place. We used this a little bit this weekend for Startup Weekend, but the intention is for it to continue and for us to invite all entrepreneurs in the state of Florida to join this team communications tool called Slack. Um, this is startupflorida.slack.com. That link takes you to a place where you can get an automatic invite via email and then join and just start talking. I've seen this work in several other states. We're doing it in Alaska, Mississippi, Cedar Rapids, where they have five or six hundred people talking about all things entrepreneurship statewide. It's a very unique culture once you get that going. It's very interesting to share that stuff. Now, let's get to the good stuff. What's right here? Winning teams. I think what we want to do first is bring the judges up and let them share with you why they have chosen the teams they have. Um, they're going to start by just giving you each some insight into um, what they think your challenges will be, how you can overcome them, what your strengths are. Is that about right? Okay, we, we, do you want to come up or do you want to, do you want to do it from your seats? I'm not sure what you guys decided. From the seats first. From the seats is fine. Do you want to stand and give them a mic? We want to do it team by team. So let's... Yeah. I didn't, I didn't catch how you guys decided you didn't make a decision. Okay, we'll just do this. Let's start with TV and go down the row and let's all talk about TV. Does that make the most sense to talk about one team at a time? Yeah. So, so all all people that have something to say about, or did you divvy it up one oh, team per? Oh, you divvied it up. Okay. See, I, I wasn't sure. Okay. So I'm just gonna let you guys take it from here. <laughs> so I'm covering stubble. Team stubble. Hi there. So um, you guys had a great presentation. You seemed uh, very prepared. You had a very polished presentation in terms of what you showed us for everything from logo to how you're gonna lay it out. Um, you did some great research there. Um, there were some concerns about uh, competition and cost in terms of bar and you know, spinning up a bar in terms of space use, but in general the feedback was very positive that you had a very interesting idea and a uh, very cool mm -hmm. approach. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, I'm doing uh, Smiling. Uh, so you guys had a really cool presentation, did a really good job. I particularly like when you put up your picture of you smiling, and then you had the exact same smile the whole time. <laughs> uh, also, your validation was really good. I think you guys are the only ones to get a pre-order and a letter of intent. Plus, you did a ton of interviews. It's really good. Anybody starting a company before you build anything, do exactly what they did. Um, our only negative comments would be for the your strategy around how you're going to distill and distribute. We're a little shaky on that. There's probably a little more you guys can do. Just play around with it. Uh, also, we were a little confused on the seasonal flavorings. Uh, they didn't seem like they paired up with the season particularly. I don't know. <laughs> you mean the slot? No, I mean just the actual flavor versus the season that they were in. It's probably a slot. Yeah, it's probably a slot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. More flavors. Step over here. The next one was New You. Um, I, th I think the, the, the positives were that um, taking the juicing industry on the road and, and, and trying to spread the gospel was really good. Um, that the flavors were amazing. I, I also think that the personalization, and we all agree on this, the personalization was, was a key ingredient to validation for your business. Some, some concerns are really how do you take it on the road? Uh, perhaps you want to start with a brick and mortar. And try to do some markets and, 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 and figure out a way that you can, you know, take 
some recipes of juice or at least have like maybe like how beer does it have like a core four juices one they're the same way that you display them here and, and, and perfect those first <clears throat> Hi everyone. I just want to also thank you for inviting me. Every time that I come out to one of these events, I get so jacked up. <laughs> it's so harmful and positive to see people using their energy like this. And you get so busy running your own business like the day to day of it that this like confuses mean to go to work tomorrow and just bring it, you know? Um, I was reaching out to Timmy. Yay! Um, really strong as far as being the first in the um, community to have that in common. Um, I, your branding is great, the ability to get it going in 24 hours is key. It's really easy to see how you can get this up and running very quickly. And um product was super um tasty. And um I think some once you get going, some people really helping you home, you know, how you want to share the product and market it and also package it. Thank you, judges. And now it's time to announce the crowd favorite. The ones that have won the hearts and minds of your peers. And it was an overwhelming landslide victory for crowd favorite. It was also a tie. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you give me a cheesy drum roll? Let's do it on the table. That'll be nice and loud. Crowd favorite goes to both. Smiley Shy and Stubble. Congratulations to Shy Stein and Stubble. We have no prize packages for you for being the crowd favorite, but you get mad props and street credit. And we have an after party later where you'll have a free beer. <laughs> okay, now let's do another cheesy uh, drum roll for Startup Weekend Tampa Bay Beverage Edition. Keep it up, come on! Third place winner goes to Smiley Shines! Smiley, come on down. Let's get the whole team down up here in front. Come on, give it up for Smiley Shines. Get down here, we have an awkward team photo. Okay, so it's put together. Both of them. I should let the photographer take over. Let the professionals pose them. Vogue, strike a pose. They're all around each other. Aww. Like when you love each other. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Hey, congratulations. All right, I think it's time for another cheesy drum roll. Come on, give me a little bit more. Sorry. Second place winner at the 2016 Tampa, Florida Beverage Innovation Edition goes to Stubble. Stubble, come on down. Come on down front. Come give us some shiny love. The smiley, the smiley bar has been set very high. Let's see what you got. Get the facial hair in there. Get this. <laughs> <laughs> the stubble. The five o'clock. Five o'clock special. First customer. <laughs> One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Perfect. Right on. Give it up, the stubble. And now. You know what to do. Come on, 2016 Startup Weekend, Tampa, Florida, your beverage innovation edition first place winner goes to Jimmy! Jimmy, come on down! Yeah. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Wait, wait, wait. We have one. <laughs> Just some kids. Okay. Awkward silence, photo op. Put it in the middle. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi, this is why I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Awesome. Michelle, is that two in the bag for you now? Look at that. Back to back winner. Well, fantastic. Congratulations to all the winners. And, you know, it's a small event. There's only four teams and a fifth. And let's, I'd like to reiterate, yeah, let me tell you this. It was really close call in the judging deliberation room, for, 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 for one. One of the reasons it took us so long is because we kept arguing about who was in what place and who should win. Um, the reality is everyone did some really strong work this weekend. And the relationships that you've built this weekend and the, the things that you learned and the tools that you've gained are strong and, and you should all pursue your businesses post weekend. Let's talk about a couple things. Stay connected. The community around you is going to be your most powerful asset. Okay? Continue to ask for help. Continue to seek mentors. Um, where's my... I've deleted a slide from the deck. <laughs> That's the worst. Let me try to remember what was on it. The most important thing going forward is probably communication. I would encourage you, so now one of the awkward things about Startup Weekend is that you form teams with virtual strangers, right? So these could be like ad hoc teams for learning purposes, or some of you could stick together and be co-founders of a business that goes on for many years. Whether one of, whichever one of those things is true, the most important thing is to communicate and be transparent with each other. Be transparent and honest with yourself and then with each other about how much time you can actually commit to this new thing. Some of you have to go back to a family of three and a 50 hour job and realistically, you might want to be involved in it, but you can't. So, you know, speak honestly, have difficult conversations if they need to be had about who can do what moving forward. Statistically, like one out of four of you is going to continue post weekend. Well, I'd like to see three out of four, all four, all five of you guys do that. Do you think that's possible? So I think that all five of you could make some product. Like, every single one of you has a vision that you could execute. And I'll try to follow up with you. We'll try to follow up with you and make sure that you have everything that you need to make it happen. Hopefully that's the case. Because we love you and we want you to be successful. And that's really it. That is a startup weekend in the bag. I hope you had a great time. This slide is for me because if I don't put this in there, I sometimes forget. It's a startup weekend tradition to take a group photo, and I should ask the photographer, where do you think that should be done? Everybody here. Mm -hmm. Everybody everybody up front. And as you come up, I'm putting up the after party information. This is it, Cigar City Beer. That happens to be the Twitter handle if you want to check it out. Address is up here. You can either take a screenshot of it or type it into your Gmail, G, uh, G stuff, Google Maps. Come on up front, everybody up front. Everybody involved in this event in any way is in this photo. We probably need to do at least two rows, probably three. We can do tall people in the back. I'm going into wedding photographer mode for you. I hope you appreciate that. Uh, we probably need to do a kneeling roll in the front. We can squish it together, let's get it together. We can do three rows, yeah. If you're super tall, get in the back. Medium people in the middle. Remember to offset your, so we need a second row in between the kneelers. Come on, somebody scoot, these, these people just kind of scoot in, walk down, make the second row. I'm not getting the second row thing. Raymond, come lead these people in. Lead these people in, just walk in, walk in. You're in front of that row, and you kind of kneel a little bit. And you want to offset your faces. Remember, if you can't see the camera, the camera can't see you. Does that work? Is that why? Is that too wide? Yeah, we just got one problem. Yeah. You're not in the way. No. Ah! All right, I get out of the way. Is that the thing? Yeah, get the corner. One, two, three. <laughs> 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 you want to?